Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct just past the top of the 8 o'clock hour. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik reporting again with a quiet forecast for now. But as we go into the course of the next couple of days, we are going to be seeing some bigger changes coming our direction, including the possibility, pretty much something for everybody in this forecast right here. We've got colder temperatures. We've got warmer temperatures. We've got rain. We've got some drier conditions. We've got some winter weather tonight. And, of course, we've got some milder temperatures down the line as well. So so whatever you've got in mind for the forecast, we've got something for you on here. If you've got anything to tell us, let us know. Let's see what you and your neighbors are reporting out there. Drop your location. City and state will do nicely. Uh, drop your city state location into the comments section along with the weather report if you have anything going on out there. Let's see some temperatures, wind speeds, rainfall amounts if you got them, cloud cover overhead, whatever you've got. Let's get some amateur meteorology going on and check out and see what's going on in your backyard. If you're outside the Mid South area, that's great. Anywhere from across the United States or if you're worldwide, Thanks for checking in to our weather blog and checking in to see what's going on out there for right now. If you can't stay around for the whole thing, again, forecast for the Mid-South in the blue bar scrolling down here at the bottom of your screen, or you can get our 7 to 10 day forecast at this website address at wreg.com slash weather. We'll take a look ahead toward Valentine's Day out there, which doesn't look too bad for now, but also seeing some problems ahead into and around the area as we get into the course of the next several days. So hang on. Also, our exclusive Twitter poll coming up, and we're going to be talking about doing some metric forecasts for you. Not the entire thing, not switching over to it, but maybe just one. We'll see what your opinions are coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Quick check of the forecast as we go into tomorrow morning. Heading out for church or Sunday school or wherever you're going to, chances of rain will be developing overnight and sticking around for a while. Now, the metro area should probably stay well above freezing. Parts of the Mid-South may dip below freezing, and that could cause problems on some of the roadways out there. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the area, again, we're winding down winter. We're more than halfway toward the next season, which is spring. The vernal equinox, as it's called, the first day of spring, will be coming up here in about 38 days and change. That'll be on March 20th, so we're getting there. For those of you who don't like wintertime, we're going to be hopefully uh, moving along toward that with some nicer conditions out there, but otherwise, again, you know, making progress toward that as we get to the next season. Temperature day of 43, that was about 10 degrees below normal for this time of the year, way below normal on the low temperature for this morning. Not seeing too much in the way of rainfall over the last several days, which basically means we're spot on normal when it comes to rainfall for this time of the year. So we are seeing some normal conditions out there for the time being out there for right now. Scott Jarvis, 42 degrees, light rain, northeasterly winds in Banner, Mississippi. Thank you very much uh, for the pictures from down that direction. Some spectacular uh, sunrise, sunset pictures from Banner, Mississippi from Mr. Scott Jarvis. Thank you very much uh, for that one. 39.6 degrees. That's specific. Thank you very much. I-240 and get well. Bart Thompson, appreciate the weather report there. Stephen Sawyers from Tatumville, Tennessee, 35 degrees. Winds at 2 miles per hour. Thank you very much for that one. And Grady Bennett, cloudy and 36 in Berclair. Thank you very much uh, for checking in from there for this evening. Looking at more clouds heading our direction from our transmitter tower camera, downtown Memphis way out there on the horizon, and looking back toward I-40 traffic right off of Whitman Road in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Thicker clouds starting to move into the Mid-South area for tonight. Not seeing a great deal of rainfall just yet, which is good news for the construction going on at 240 and Park Avenue, which is shut down at this time. Park Avenue east-west is closed, as is 240 north-south at this time. So if you're going across this area, Quince Avenue, Quince Avenue overpass, back in the upper left-hand corner of your screen to the south or Poplar or Walnut Grove back to the north of this would be a good idea because otherwise you're not getting through this area throughout the rest of the weekend. Now, if the TDOT construction workers get done with their scheduled construction for this weekend and they get it done early and they reopen the roadways, stay tuned to News Channel 3 as we'll let you know more about this. But otherwise, heavy construction going on here, so plan your routes accordingly as you head through the area for later on tonight. New Bern, Tennessee, Don Garner, 35 degrees. Thank you very much. Trey Brooks, cold and see, cold and cold out there from Memphis. Thank you very much uh, for that one at this point in time. 
Uh, Michael Wilson from Chicago. Yes, a very active pattern uh, for you up around the Great Lakes. Hope you stay warm and safe up there with more uh, winter weather coming on through for the time being. Lisa Young Barbieri. Yeah, we'll try to avoid interrupting any show if we can possibly avoid it. But uh, again, if it's any show out there and there's lives on the line, we will be making certain we interrupt the, the uh, make certain for everybody stays safe out there. So thank you very much for that reminder coming up. Winter weather advisory for tonight going into effect at 11 o'clock for northeast Arkansas, the Missouri boot heel, and back way up into the northwestern corner of Tennessee. No counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area are actually affected by this, but we are the station that's on your side, so we want you to be aware of what's going on if you're traveling. This area here could be the best possibility of picking up some slick conditions overnight as temperatures briefly drop below freezing. The metro area, North Mississippi, East Arkansas, West Tennessee, not seeing any concern at this time, but right in here is where we could see that slick conditions taking place. Now, we do have some areas of precipitation starting to show up just southwest of the metro area, North Mississippi and southeastern Arkansas, right along I-40 and south of there on Storm Tracker 3S radar. Now, a little further back to the west, you're noticing again some of that pink mixed in with the green. That is precipitation mixed with or changing over to snow or some form of frozen precipitation. Sleet, freezing rain, uh, grapple, snow, anything like that taking place here. Mostly is rain and down toward the surface it's too warm. So way up several thousand feet, this is probably snow or sleet but it's probably as it drops down to the surface, it becomes rainfall because it's too warm down here for it to stay frozen. So that's what we're looking at for right now. And we've got even more moisture on the way. This is just the leading edge of what's going to be a very soggy pattern shaping up for the Mid-South over the next several days. So if you have any outdoor plans, uh, you basically kind of run out of time. The next best possibility of doing anything outdoors will be about midweek close to Valentine's Day or so because this is just the beginning of what we're going to be seeing which is why the National Weather Service is posting a flood watch in effect for again the area taking place here in northwest Tennessee northeast Arkansas and southeast Missouri. It's called a real watch again for the area that it covers. It's just a type of watch. It's not a flash flood watch but again it's going to be affecting the area a fairly large portion of the area so we're seeing this again extend to much of the Mid-South as in a real watch. Again, nothing huge taking place. It's not a flash flood emergency. It just means a good portion of rain is going to be falling, especially in this area. Now, could this be extended further southward? Sure, but it doesn't look that way for right now, so that's good news. We'll talk more about how much rainfall we're going to be taking a look at coming up here uh, in just a little bit. See who else got checking in for right now. Uh, again, chances of rainfall out there for a little bit later on. See, well, Trey Brooks, I get, I pick people at random depending on what they're saying on here. If they have the temperatures and stuff like that, I'll pick them out. Like Rosalind Blakely, Gates, Tennessee, 37 degrees. Thank you very much for that one. Love being gifted from St. Louis. Uh, say hello to my friends Judy and Steve Newell up that direction around the, I believe, the Manchester area, close to the mall up there. So. Uh, say hello to them and welcome to everybody else who's checking in for this evening. Chilly tonight, the warmest temperature we could find on WeatherNet 3, 40 degrees at Memphis International, everybody else back in the mid-30s, and that's about as uh, warm as it got for much of the area for today. Very chilly out there. Okay, running the numbers into overnight. Notice past News Channel 3 at 10, we start to see those numbers hovering around freezing. Northeast Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, just for benchmark purposes. West Tennessee here, northern Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, the Mississippi River wandering on through, and here's Memphis down this direction to where you kind of get an idea as to where you are from there. Temperatures overnight, again, as we go past about midnight or so, the best possibility of anything freezing to the roadways will be coming up into around eastern, northeastern Arkansas, the Boot Hill, southeast Missouri, western areas of Kentucky, extreme northwestern Tennessee, north of Dyersburg, and back into around southern Illinois. That'll be the best possibility, but notice on here the winds, the moving lines on screen were out of the north, if we go into tomorrow morning around daybreak, the wind starts to turn out of the south, and that's going to have a very interesting effect on our weather for tomorrow morning. By the time we hit daybreak, we've already hit our low temperatures 
and numbers will be on the way back up. So notice the temperatures here in northeast Arkansas and northwest Tennessee were already back above freezing by the time we hit sunrise tomorrow. So whatever we get in the way of frozen precipitation on the ground, it will not be lasting for long, maybe a few hours at best. And then throughout the rest of tomorrow, more chances of rain overspreading the area and temperatures chilly, but again, pretty close to where we should be, along with those winds coming in from out of the south. So we'll be looking for temperatures on the way up as the warm front arrives into the area, keeping the rain just rainfall, not seeing any frozen precipitation. So good news from what we are looking at uh, at this time into and around the area for right now. Welcome to everybody checking in for the area. Michael Wilson, the freezing line, hugging the I-40 corridor. Yeah, but it looks like hopefully it's going to stay again just well north of there, so it shouldn't be a problem here. I think the main problem with travel is going to be the farther you go north on I-55 around portions of southeast Missouri up toward I-44, St. Louis, I-70. That's where you could see some slick spots and some maybe some dicey traveling conditions. Here in the Mid-South, we're just not expecting much more than uh, wet roadways. Billy Lightning, 41, light rain in Batesville, Mississippi. Thanks for checking in. Already below freezing in Paula McCarty's uh, thermometer in northeast Arkansas. Thank you very much uh, for that report from in and around the area there. And light rain in Redfield, Sadie Ainsworth. Thank you very much uh, for that check-in for there. Rain continues into tomorrow night, but temperatures again remain well above freezing, so we're not getting anything in the way of major amounts of either winter precipitation or anything involving uh, heavy amounts of rain just yet. Now again, the best possibility of anything involving ice accumulation that is about freezing rainfall, Memphis down here, Mississippi River here, and again around the Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas, and a small part of northwest Tennessee. That'll be the best possibility of getting a minor glazing, but there still could be, again, some slick spots into these areas for tomorrow morning. Rest of the Mid-South at this point really just does not look like we're going to be getting much of anything else, and the best accumulation possible, say from Fort Smith back up to around St. Louis, Rolla, Lake of the Ozarks could get something back to around Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Harrison, Arkansas. That'll be the best target zone for anything frozen later on this evening. Now, another big story coming up will be the amount of rainfall we get. Now, later on this week, could be looking, and the reason that Flood Watch has been posted, heading into the early portion of this next week, four to five inches plus could be a good possibility. Total rainfall from northeast Arkansas through northwest Tennessee. Now, we could pick up about one to two inches around the I-40 corridor, a little less than that south of I-40 into north Mississippi and southeast Arkansas. Either way, we're looking at some very soggy conditions as we go into the next couple of days. And there could be, again, some more flood watches and or some flood warnings coming up. So keep it tuned again to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on this in the next several days. How about severe weather? Nothing expected for tonight. Very quiet out there for now. Possibility of just a few thunderstorms south and west of us tomorrow from the Arklatex area down through the hill country of Texas, just north of the Gulf of Mexico. And then by Monday, we start to see that possibility of a marginal threat, the lowest possibility of severe weather on the scale. Generic thunderstorms possible in the light green shaded area but in the southern parts of the viewing area coming up as we go into Monday afternoon and evening, that's where we could see, again, some isolated areas of thunderstorms that could turn strong or severe. Again, possibility of damaging winds and large hail being the main problem out there, but we cannot, at this time frame of the year, rule out the possibility of isolated tornadoes either. So that's, again, also something we're going to be taking a look at. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on the potential for, again, uh, severe weather out there as we go into the next few days. All right, for the next couple of days, pretty soggy. Temperatures tomorrow close to normal, but still pretty chilly, and showers expected throughout the entire day. Showers turning into thunderstorms and much warmer as we go into Monday as warm air pushes up off the Gulf of Mexico. So the high on Sunday, mid to upper 40s, the low Sunday night will not go that low. Maybe drop a couple of degrees before heading upwards throughout the morning on Monday. And before daybreak on Monday, we could be looking at temperatures easily but over the low temperatures that we've seen as they continue to rise through Monday. So some very warm numbers coming back our direction. And as we go into the Tuesday morning area, 
Could see some leftover showers and thunderstorms and drizzle by lunchtime on Tuesday, but then all that clears on out of here and we get a dry middle part of the week. That looks pretty good. Valentine's Day out there. If you're looking forward to Valentine's Day, again, spending it with your special someone, or if you're like the Jay Giles Band and you think love stinks, again, looks like it's going to be a good evening for showers and thunderstorms out there for Valentine's Day, no matter what's your opinion of it. And looking at a slight cool down coming up by next weekend with showers and thunderstorms sticking around out there, but no major winter weather coming on through as in temperatures, or as in snow or ice or anything else. So very good news on that. A little chilly out there, again, getting into next weekend, but doesn't look like anything major at this time. And there are some signs in the extended forecast that we could be looking at the possibility of some much heavier weather coming our way as we go into the last several days of February. We'll be watching that with a lot of interest to see what happens. We'll also, again, be watching what goes on on Monday evening, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on that. Speaking of severe weather, if you want to know more about the upcoming Skywarn training sessions taught by the National Weather Service in Memphis, the first meetings have been announced. There's about a baker's dozen of them, and the first four will be held across the Mid-South in the upcoming several next days of February. They last about an hour or so, hour and a half, depending on how many questions are asked and answered. Again, it's a great opportunity for kids about eight or nine years old or older to learn more about severe weather, and it's a good opportunity for you to know more about what happens with severe weather. So again, what to do before, during severe weather, what to report back to the National Weather Service so they can tell everybody else in the Mid-South what's going on. You show up, you take the course, and you're better informed, and the more Skywarn spotters we have, the better off and safer we all are. Now, this is, again a spotter's course. This is not a chasing course. That's done by experts, and you do not chase storms unless you have been properly trained by experts, period, end of sentence. Don't argue with me on that, okay? So again, you got to know what you're doing to chase storms. Spotters use your eyes and your ears and your brains and your technology to call that information in. Your information could help save lives. So if you haven't done it before, please consider becoming a Skywarn spotter in the Mid-South. Totally free, paid for by your tax dollars. If you want to get more information on this, weather.gov. Click on the Mid-South area of the map or go to weather.gov slash M-E-G. That's the three-letter designator for the National Weather Service office in Memphis. Easy to find, even easier to take. I've been doing this since 1980, so good opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about that as well. My forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Welcome to everybody else uh, in the Mid-South checking on in for tonight. Joyce Johnson Berry, Crenshaw, Mississippi, 41, and light rainfall. Thank you very much for checking in there. Uh, Sleet in Senatobia, Nancy Holden Crumley, a uh, little bit warm for that, but uh, wouldn't turn it down between a couple of the raindrops out there, but okay, thanks very much. If you got pictures of that, uh, please send it in for right now. Uh, the question is, will our mud be mushy or frozen, Scott Bullard? Uh, right now, it looks more mushy than anything else, but very good question on that over the next couple of days. Next forecast, again, as we get into the rest of the next couple of days, should be looking, again, pretty quiet out there, but doesn't really look too bad. One question we are asking, and this is on my Twitter page, and this is mainly as a science communicator to gauge people's reaction on this and just for a nice little kind of change of pace in its own way. If we do the weather forecast on there, everything in the United States is usually done in English measurements. And we are one of three countries around the world that have not switched over to the metric system. So if we were to do just one weathercast, say next weekend, daybreak Saturday, and do it in metrics, we wouldn't do the whole thing. We would have metrics, the temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit, so you can see the difference on that. Is this something you would not mind seeing, or would you pot quite possibly not care less? So if you'd like to go to my Twitter page and find out more, twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3, should I do next weekend's forecast in the metric system? It's not a scary thing. It's just a different way of numbering things. It's a more accurate way of using numbers to measure temperature and wind speed and things of that nature. And it works very well for 99% of the rest of the planet. So should we do something like that? The tactics, again, so far out there 
and the numbers that we've been seeing so far, about half of you voting have said, sure, this is not a problem. About a third have said a little less than that, no, metrics is too hard, they don't want to see that. And about one out of every five is saying, meh, don't care about it one way or the other. So if you'd like to vote, please do so. Head to my Twitter page and let us know what you think. And maybe we will feature it next weekend or maybe we won't. Again, depending on what you say about it coming up again next weekend. And we'll update that poll information throughout the rest of this next week. So please drop in and cast your ballot. We'd love to know what you think about stuff like that. More information, again, please give me a buzz. If you have any questions, concerns, something you saw in here, something you'd like to suggest adding on, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com, and we'll get you, again, updated on that. If it's something we can add to the list here, I'll send it up to my supervisors, see what they say about it, and see if we can feature it on here as we go throughout the next several days and weeks. Coming up in about half an hour on my Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope pages, we're going to have our late edition of Weather Overtime, including a look at weather where the troops are, weather from around the world where you may have friends or loved ones around, and we'll take a look at some various outposts of the American military around the globe. And we'll also take another look at the forecast and see if anything's changed out there. And, of course, we'll have more on the updated forecast coming up on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10 right after the football game uh, gets over with for later on this evening. So we may be on a few minutes late. We'll have to wait and see how that works. Again, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks for the weather reports out there. Thank you very much uh, for t tuning in and letting us know where you're from. And stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend. And we'll keep you advised on all the rest of the forecast changes. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'll be on with your forecast update on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Find me on social media out there. And stay tuned for your forecast updates throughout the rest of the weekend with News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining us tonight.